Tanya Viette. I'm with AAE Glass. Today we're going to learn some really fun stuff. We're going to use big mouth paints as you can see here with combined with magic oil like this and we're gonna make a cool well you can use it for a bowl like this or you can make a plate like this. It's a lot of fun. Won't you join me? We got a Saturday video. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Tricked you, didn't I? You thought I lost it. It's been a long time, everybody. Six months, six months, guys, and I'm back with a Saturday video, and boy, this is some serious stuff. Uh, about a year ago, I had someone email me and say, do you know what acrylic pouring is? I really did not. Uh, it's using acrylic paints um, and they get these really cool cells and really cool kind of geode looks and um, so she asked me about it. I messed around with a little bit of the paints and uh, couldn't achieve the results that I wanted. So I picked it back up and then about two months ago I just decided that I gotta, I gotta rock and roll with this so I just figured it out guys. I figured it out. I used every single medium possible to mix with every kind of paint on the market and I did come up with one combination. I do know that some people are, are doing acrylic pouring with other paints, uh, with UGC and things like that. I know Margot Clark is doing some things. So mine's very different. Uh, maybe you can watch theirs as well and come up with your own technique. But what we did was, I did find that the glass line, we're calling these the big mouth paints, I'll explain why later. But I did find that the glass line combined with my schedule, combined with this uh, GAI oil is, it's, it's perfect, it's exactly what I've been looking for. Now here's a little bit, guys. Here's a little bit that I'm worried about, okay? This is very intense. Of course, you know that about me. It's very, very intense. So there's four to five different ways that we can do this, but each technique is definitely a specific step, okay? So some you use oil on the tile, some you don't use oil to the end. So what I suggest that you do, I'll break this video up. We'll just say project one, project two, three, four, blah, 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 throughout the video and you can reference it. And I'm gonna keep this video free forever. It's too cool not to, uh, to share with everybody in the world. So I'll tell you guys, I went through about $5,000 in supplies and paints. That's not a joke. I probably made 100 tiles. I uh, went through about 200 bottles of paints of the regular squeeze bottle, glass line paints. Uh, it was pretty hard to manage with those. So one of the questions that you're gonna ask me and my Facebook friends and everybody else is, well, why can't I just use the regular glass line paints in the bottle, in the squeeze bottle, the regular uh, squeeze bottle paints? Well, you can, but it's a lot more difficult. Uh, and the second thing is I got with glass line and told them what I needed. I need a real smooth and thinner cons consistency. And so that's what they've done for us. And you also want the wide mouth, you also want the wide mouth jars to pour. That's very important. Also, these jars are larger. You get a lot more paint, a lot more bang for your buck. You'll see, okay? So could you take your old bottles and squeeze them in, then mix them up? Yeah, but it's, it's a pain. And also, if you have the squeeze bottle jars, um, you would have to not use them if they're over a year old. They're over a year old, they start getting real thick, right? Like clay-like. And Glassline says you can add water to them to make them, you know, uh, vibrant or excuse me, a thinner consistency again to use them. But here's the thing. You keep on adding water. You keep on adding water. How many times can you do that? I have found that it dilute, starts diluting the color. So I don't want any of that. You guys are going to see some examples I'm going to throw up here while we're doing this video. You're going to see how vibrant these are. And this is also very important. This is absolutely a specific firing schedule. One, to burn out the oil in your kiln. We'll talk about that. No, it's not flammable. Two, to get these paints to be high, glossy, colorful, like you're seeing in the pictures. These pictures are not Photoshop. This is straight out of the kiln. Uh, you're gonna love it, okay? So let's take a look at a couple of these right here. Uh, the first one we're gonna look at is the uh, really cool kind of galaxy bowl. I can show you guys how I did that frit edge, pretty simple. Um, but you can see there's a couple areas here that almost have like a um, tie-dye flower. So I'll go ahead and, and call those out right here on the picture. And you can see it also in this plate over here that I've done, these kind of tie-dye flower things and these geo geode rings. So the first thing that you guys need to know is, the most important thing that you need to know is the paints. You've got to pre-mix the paints into the right consistency, sometimes with oil, sometimes with water. One of the things that, you know, you take a chance, everybody watches the video and you just do too much in the video and people say, she said this, she said this. 
Do not listen to anything that anyone says on the internet. Refer back to your video. Um, it's the thinner consistency of the paint where it's like ice cream, melted, melted ice cream, that causes, combined with the oil, that will let, allow you to have these beautiful flowers and rings, okay? So you won't get it every time, but you'll still get some cool stuff. Um, but if you can master the consistency, the viscosity of the paint, um, it needs to be pretty thin, but not too thin, then you'll get these flowers. So uh, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna get rocking and rolling right now, and what we're gonna do is do four projects, and then I'm gonna show you this really cool thing that I came up with this this morning, literally two hours ago, how to mount them on the stainless steel eight by eight stands um, that AE Glass carries, and you can use alcohol links and just make it uh, super, super cool. And then you're gonna go, why didn't you tell us about the supply list last week? Because all these emails were going out because I just came up with it this morning. That's why, that's how my brain works, that's how it goes. You guys know this by now. Uh, but it's pretty cool to do that too. So hey, we'll always take another order, baby. It's all good. All right, let's rock and roll. <laughs> All right, everybody, the most important thing here is actually making sure that you have a nice consistency of paint, okay? So you're gonna see why we use the wide mouth jars. All right, so first of all, you're gonna open these up, okay? Now, this is a brand new jar, but after you use these for a little bit, pretty much you wanna make sure some of the paint could get on the outside of your rim. Guys, please make sure and clean that off with a paper towel before you uh, pack it up for the day because what's gonna happen is if you guys have never used glass line paints before, these are clay-based paints made by a ceramic company originally. And what will happen is they will harden up on the edge. And if you're real messy about it, when you open the paint next time, the, the clay will actually fall in there and you gotta pick it out off your tile. So it's just, it's not the end of the world, but it just kind of makes things easier. I'm trying to stir with my left hand. Please bear with me so you guys get a good shot. You got it? Okay. So what I'm doing is look at, look, this is, this is the big mouth paints. I've already talked to glass line. They know, he knows what I'm doing. Um, great company guys, great people to work with. You guys, everybody is great with, to work with. But, you know, look at the consistency. It's already almost there. Um, and, cause he knows what I'm doing with these. And so that's why I like the big mouth paints right there. Okay. All right, so you don't have to shake them or anything like that. I'm just gonna stir this up. I'm using a uh, popsicle stick. You can use a skinny one, big fat one, whatever you wanna do. And what I basically want is, I want to mix this to the consistency of melted ice cream. If you open up a big mouth paint and you think, oh, this already looks great, most of them will. They, you have to stir them anyway, guys, because there might be a little bit of a, a clunkiness at the bottom and you don't want that just plopping out on your tile. So just mix it up. When they're full, it's harder to mix, but you know, it's all right, okay? So what you wanna do is you want, that's pretty much perfect. That's pretty much per perfect. See how it's dripping off the, um, what they have these at the doctor's office, the tongue stick. They have, the, I don't know, some tongue stick, but what is it? Jumbo popsicle stick? See how it's dripping? Watch, watch this. I mean, that is perfect, okay? If you get one that's a little thicker, all right, all you need to do is take water. Do not take oil. You're gonna see me do a lot of things with the oil. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, I'll just mix the oil in the jar. No, do not do that because there's times you use oil and there's times you do not. And you can always use these little guys right here these uh, restaurant ramekins you get on Amazon um, and you could just use these and you can kind of mix them up, you know, thinner consistency out of the jar if you wanted to. So I'm gonna put a couple squirts of water, just two squirts of water in here and now I'm gonna mix it, all right? I probably didn't even really need it. Oh, that's nice. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys that John is back um, from on his photo shoot from Africa that you remember he went like two years ago and he went to go meet the cobra snakes and it was cobra snakes friend or foe. He's back everybody. He decided he didn't want to live down in Africa and he came on back and he came back home. So now we have John today on the camera. Say hello, John. Hello. All right, and uh, Dana is off at a, um, she's in a swimsuit shoot in Ibiza, so she'll be back soon. Uh, we also got Sierra on camera too. Say hello, Sierra. Hey, hey. Okay, all right. All right, now it's like, I think I'm in a rock concert every time. Okay, so that is perfect. Can you get that stream, John? That is perfect. You guys know the, the Saturday videos are not professionally edited. I just do one take. And uh, so they're a little, not like the online videos we have, which are very professional. Plug. Okay, this, this is too thick. This is too thick. I'm gonna try to cover for my, this is too thick out of the jar. All right, see how it just drips. My hands are shaking a little bit, but see how it just drips. It's like kind of wanting to make, it, it's just a little bit too thick. You want that stream. So I'm gonna take some water, 
One, two, squirt it up, okay? Stir it up. And then you wanna get that nice melted ice cream stream. There we go, it's already happening. Well, I think one more would do it. Okay, see how, it, see how it's breaking? It's almost there, just keep stirring. I don't want you guys to fill these jars with water. Uh, you're gonna really dilute it too much, just one or two squirts at a time. Um, so anyway, that's it. You're gonna do this to all your paints. We have 15 colors to start of the big mouth paints and you will see it's very economical to order the big jars. So if you've got some two ounce jars, you kind of have to make your own jars of prep. But when you guys buy the glass line paints, if you just want to use your two ounce up, you're going to have to do a lot of mixing and you're going to have to pour it into another jar because you need the wide mouth to be to be pouring. OK, so we're going to do I'm going to do that. I'm going to mix up the paints. We've got a nice selection of the rainbow. Also, guys, get a lot of black if you're going to do the swipe technique and get a lot of white. So I would go heavy on the white because you can also use the white to mix. These are mixable paints. You can actually mix the colors. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna do what's called Easy Flower and Easy Craters, and we're gonna do that. This is project number one. Mix all your paints before you use them, okay? Mix them all, P mix the colors that you want. I suggest using at least four or five colors a tile. Four or five colors, okay? So I'm gonna mix up all my paints, and we're gonna be right back with uh, Easy Flower and Crater. crater. Okay, one thing I wanna tell you guys, heed my warning on this okay i am not kidding when i tell you that i use every medium in the world to try to get these craters flowers these cells that everybody likes in acrylic pouring i am telling you you're going to go on the internet lots of lots of youtube videos i found that a lot of them didn't help me because they use a chemical called floetrol that is a big no-no to put in your kiln that is flammable it's toxic when it burns you don't want it i've researched this extensively the gai oil the GAI cutting oil in the green bottle. I, this was almost one of my last ones that I thought, okay, I'm trying to get these cool things to happen. I tried every medium. I'm not gonna name companies, I'm telling you, and water-friendly mediums, oil-friendly mediums. I tried Crisco oil from the house. The thing is, you have to find something that's non-toxic, can be burned, and this is lead-free, this is non-flammable, non-toxic, non-flammable, um, and complying with all laws from safety and environmental protection. Boom, okay? Burns off clean in your kiln. It is very important that you follow the schedule I give you. Oil, burning this oil causes off-gassing in your kiln. These can, call little, these can cause little mumps and bumps in your pieces when fused. You, you will see on the firing schedule that there's, uh, I don't recall, I gotta look at my notes, but it, I'll have it here. It's, there's one or two burnout areas at 600 and 1,000 and holding for 30 minutes. You're like, why is she doing that? It's not for the glass, it's to burn off this off-gassing because if not, you're going to have these mumps and these bumps. You want it to burn away clean and then start melting the paint. All right, I'm gonna make this real quick. I have a six millimeter uh, white tile here. This is just white with um, Tecta on the bottom. And this is a full fuse schedule, basic full fuse. You guys probably have those in your studio. That's what I want you to use, basic full fuse. You can do this two ways. We can pour on our already fused tiles and then slump them into to plates, that's fine, or bowls, cut a circle. You can, in other words, what I'm saying is you can have a pre-fused blank, or you can do this on a single tile, cut that tile up when the paint is dry and construct another piece like this. Boom, boom, and boom, okay? You see these three right here, these pieces? I, all I did, you can, you can just, when it's, Paint is dry, you just cut it up. It's really easy. I'll show it quickly at the end of the video, but what an awesome thing. So you can pre-make a bunch of plates and then use them as elements um, in your, in whatever the heck you want, okay? All right, here we go, guys. So this is Easy Flower and Craner, tile number one. On my pre-fused tile, I make sure that this is clean, okay? So I've got all of my paints that are mixed to a nice consistency, okay? Very nice, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is, do not dump a lot of paint on here. Less is more. There's a way to make everything look pretty, okay? Less is more. If this paint is too thick, it is going to crack. You're going to get some cracking anyway in almost every single tile, okay? You can see that here. This is where the paint is very thick, and as it dries, it's, it's cracking like mud, okay? I like that look, and I'll show you something cool later to do with that. So I, I'm cool with the cracking all the time. If you get the paint to the just to the right thinness, you'll get a tile that has no cracking, and that's this one right here. Now, you can even see in this area of the tile, there are just a little bit of cracking. To get it consistently, the paint consistently throughout your entire tile is difficult, but let it flow, let it be, let it rock, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is, let's pour a little bit on here. Look at, I'm just pouring 
just like this, okay? Not a lot of paint. You don't want to use up a lot of paint. It's the yeah, you know you want to make this paint stretch as far as you can, and um, so I kind of leave a little gap of the white between there. You don't have to use white. Can you use it? Yeah. Prefuse any color you want, knowing that that color is going to show through if the paint cracks. Right. That's kind of important to know. There's a nice consistency right there. Okay. Now you guys know why I use the big mouth jars. This is this is. I'm going to do a little rainbow pattern. All right. I'm not putting on too much. I'm using this uh, aqua. I love this. I'm really. I really dig this aqua color. Let's talk about my setup right now. What I have is, uh, I think they're one of those oven roasted turkey baster aluminum pans. I don't know what the heck you call them. I don't cook at all. And uh, so these are found at the grocery store, like three for, you can even get them at the dollar store, three for a dollar. And I use them over and over and over again. And I also have this little dish rack thing I found, which is pretty cool on Amazon. It's just like a, I don't know, rubbery metal di dish rack thing, whatever, but it's perfect. But there's one thing, guys, I want to tell you what I do. I do take a plain piece of glass like this, a plain piece of glass, and I actually put it underneath it to catch the drips, and I'll just fire that too, because why not? I don't want to waste, I don't want to waste the paint. So let that just be the, the catcher for everything that we do, and then we just kind of fuse them and, and do cool stuff with them. Um, dark blue, so I'm gonna go back to my red. I might even put a little metallic, metallic copper in there. Just a thin line, not a lot. Think about it, guys, these are, you know, they're not totally cheap. You get a lot, you get a big bang for your buck, but you don't want to dump so much in there and waste. Just a little bit, okay? A little bit. And you want the thinner consistency for the flowers. If you're trying to achieve the flowers, and I'm talking about those tie-dye looking flowers and craters, you really, really want that thin consistency. Um, I feel like I need a little more yellow, so I'm just kind of do what I want to do, like I always do, okay? So now what you want to do is take a regular paint spatula and now, don't be lazy about this. Here's the thing. You want to mix a little bit of the colors and then dry it off with a paper towel. Okay, now you want to make sure and you draw, you basically clear your palette. Okay, I'm just smearing this around a little bit. Clear your palette. Clear your palette. Because you don't want to mix all these colors. You don't want to just mix them. I'll tell you what, guys. I have mixed these too much. Uh, and I have caused mud. Okay, I have caused muddy colors. I have caused muddy colors, okay? So that's not what we want to do. Take it, clear it off. Now this is a little bit too much paint. That's going to be your biggest problem. So I want you guys to go less, okay? You're going, well, how much paint is too much? It's looking a little globby. Um, I probably could have done just with a little less paint, but that's all right. You know, I use a little bit more than I should have. And, it, you know, it's all right. Don't beat yourself up over it, okay? Uh, now, okay, so that's how I'm looking right here. Now what I'm going to do is take my black paint. I always do this trick with a contrasting color. This is why I use black. I was, uh, I, you know, I know people are thinking, I don't want to use black, but you want to use black, you want to use white, you want to use dark blue, something contrasting to your palette. Do you have to do a rainbow? No, you could do the cool colors from the cool color kit that you guys have, and then use dark blue as your swipe color. So your swipe color should always be your darkest color, okay? Now, the trick is you want to take your black, okay? And I'm actually going to pour this into a little bit of one of those restaurant ramekins here because I want this to be thinner, real thin. Okay, so your swipe color, here's a little tip for you, your swipe color for tile number one is always thinner, okay? So I'm mixing this up. I'm trying to do it with my left hand so you can see. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that, I don't think. All right, da-da-da. So this is like watery thin. This is really, really thin, okay? This is real thin, guys, all right? Real thin. Careful of that water. That water wants to sit on top. I got to really stir it in there, okay? Now, what you're going to do is, this is awesome. I love this thing. This is uh, Michael's in the cake decorating aisle. Uh, you guys are probably laughing at me because you're like, yeah, Tanya, it's a blankety blank, but I don't know what that is. I just know it's something that I can use for paints, okay? Yeah, cake decorating, uh, spatula, icing thingy, okay? So now what I do is I'm going to go ahead over here into my side pan, okay? I'm going to pour this paint, guys right onto the spatula. Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna have my oil ready to rock. Okay, this is gonna go fast. Here you go, you're gonna take the black, you're gonna to go to the end right here, push it down, and you're gonna swipe it. Okay, swipe it right across. All right, now, this is different than traditional swipe technique. You'll see some of the cells pop up. 
and that's fine, but this is where the fun comes in. I'm gonna take my oil, I'm gonna go way up here, way up high, okay? And then I'm gonna drop it down. Here we go, check it out. Look at the flowers. Oh, that is, yeah! Woo! I love it. these flowers right here oh my gosh this is amazing all right here we go so it's take your contrast color swipe it across when you guys are swiping okay you want it to be really you're almost sliding it across the skating pond okay sliding across this you're not trying to push the paint everybody you're skimming across the top as we're sitting here talking there are more uh cells opening up right here but you see these flowers right here and let me just go ahead and take a little pointer right here. All right, see these flowers right here? All right, so when that's done, and that's that's freaking awesome, I, I just said it, I, I said it, okay? Um, what you wanna do is what's what we call dress up the sides. So I take the stuff that's here, and I'll use my palette, my dish. it's dripping off the side. I take that stuff right here, and I push it over to the side, okay, why? When you fire these paints, glass line is going to want to retract from the side. That surface tension, even surface tension, even happens with well, with anything in the world, but uh, not anything in the world, but anything that's liquid. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to take that paint and bring it over to the side of the tile. Okay. Bring it over to the side of the tile. Uh, when you fuse it, that paint will then run around to the edges, and it'll look really natural. Otherwise, you're going to get edges. Um, the paint's going to come back a little bit, and you would get a white edge because my towel's white. Not not that big of a deal, but I like to what I call do do what I call dress the sides. Oh wow, this looks amazing! I feel awesome about this. I'm really excited about it. And uh, oh, one more thing, everybody, you want to go ahead and tape the back of your tile with masking tape. I'll show you on the next tile. Uh, trust me, you want this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry overnight. You could put it in your kiln at 250 degrees um, and just heat it up. You don't need to kiln wash the shelves. You're only going to 250. Just put it on your kiln at 250 to rush dry it. If you're in a bind for 20 minutes, but um, you're going to get a, some kind of shelf messy with that paint. It's going to be a paint to a paint. To, to let it dry, guys. And guess how long you let it dry for overnight and fire it tomorrow. There are ways to rush it. Do not take a blow dryer to this. If you take a blow dryer to it, I'm going to show you how to use a blow dryer effectively. But if you take it to a blow dryer, you know what's going to happen? It's going to blow your design out of the way. So don't do that. So that is easy flowers. And uh, you got some of the craters going on, some of the cells. But let's move on to the next one. Boom! Okay, everybody, this is called regular swipe, regular swipe. What you need for the regular swipe is, uh, what do you need for the regular swipe? You need this, the big spatula, you need the little spatula, a little palette knife. Obviously, if you don't have these things, guys, don't freak out. Just go and just, the big spatula I would get for sure, that I would get. But if you don't have something like this, you, you, know, kind of, you can use popsicle sticks, okay? So this is called regular swipe, regular swipe. So what we're going for in here are very small cells. You'll get some medium-sized cells, as well you can see that here flashing the pictures for you okay so that's where we're going and you might be thinking to myself yourself yeah, why is she showing me so many things because i want you to be successful you can combine them okay combine it i don't know just combine it do what you want to do but listen this is very important okay i'm going to take the gai magic oil that's my word magic oil and i'm putting a little bit on top like you're greasing a pan not too much if you put too much on What's going to happen is the, the uh, paint will start to retract from the glass. First of all, um, this paint already, you know, doesn't want to stick to that glass because it's glossy, but now I'm, I'm putting an oil slick on there. So I, I just put it on. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm not a scientist. I don't know why, and I really don't care why. I'm just, this just works, okay? Um, and this is, again, just trial and error, me doing this over and over again, figuring things out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna oil that tile and I'm not putting oil on top. This is called regular swipe, okay? So I pick my swipe color 
Um, I'm gonna pick black. So I already know that my swipe color is gonna be thin, just like tile one, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, use my restaurant ramekin, pour a little bit in there. Not too much, I don't need that much, okay? And I wanna thin this out. Your swipe color is thin, just like tile one. So that's, that's something that I have, they both have in common, okay? Not too thin, but thin, all right? So I go ahead and I mix this. Okay, one of the things you might, what the, why did I just pick that up? That's not even what I need. One of the things you might be thinking to yourself is, is this uh, good for System 96, or, you know, Oceanside um, glass, bullseye? Uh, if you're a Wismock user, float glass, it's good. These paints work with all everybody, okay? All right, so I've got a pretty nice thin, I like that. How do I know it's thin? It's kind of breaking up and just dripping off, all right? So that's thin, that's the swipe color. We don't want the rest of our paints to be that way. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. Look what I just did, I just poured it right on top of that. All right, got my catch tray, here we go. So now, even though every time that you guys pour, even though we just poured not 10 minutes ago, I'm gonna go ahead and stir it up with my stick again. Not too much, nice and thin. The thicker your paint is, the more it cracks, right? And so make sure that you use a tile color that you really like, okay? In case it cracks it, it can show, it will show through. Uh, I'm gonna show you a, a trick how to fill the cracks at the end, just kind of these little tips and tricks. Uh, you can actually do that with glass powder. Um, so I wanna go just a little bit. I use a lot of yellow, I, I, I like it. Oh, you know what I meant to do? I meant to do a, a cool color palette. You guys saw the kits that we had that was a special, pre-order special. Um, we don't have the kits right now. I'm gonna see, uh, we'll see how many requests we get for them, but we do sell all of the paints a la carte of course we sell the gai green bottle magic oil it's really cheap it's like three dollars and something cents look at that i just blew that didn't i okay because i didn't stir it all right now i'm going to go ahead and do some blue nope you know what yeah i'll do a little blue what i didn't stir i just told you guys to stir and i didn't stir let's do some metallic copper okay this uh, this is already pre-stirred okay we're going over here all right not a lot, just be in control. Be in control so you don't waste the paint, okay? You'll get used to it. You know, one of the other things too is you wanna make sure that you don't have any um, dried stuff, uh, dried paint falling in here from when you open the jars. When you guys open the jars, if you're not, like this kind of stuff. If you don't clean that stuff off when you close your jar, of course it's going to dry in there. And then when you open it the next time, it's gonna come crumbling out. So clean your lids, because I always do, don't I, Sierra? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I absolutely do not clean my lids. That's the truth, okay? Uh, da, 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 purple, okay? All right, so now I'm going to, I say, I don't know where my palette knife is. You can take this, you can take a palette knife. But what you wanna do is kind of blend the colors here. It's gonna take a couple swipes, okay? And remember, you are not trying to push the paint off. You're going to gliding across the top, okay? So now I've got my very, thin black stir it again every time you pick up a paint you should be stirring it again i pour it right on the end here right on the end okay now what i'm going to do is take my palette my icing whatever the heck this is and i go skim it right across the top okay all right that's the first round i've got some big cells opening up there some cells opening up over here now, you see this right here, guys? You've got to clean that off. You can't drag another color through, okay? So the deeper you go with your knife, if you do deeper consistency, you're gonna get that kind of stuff. So I've got cells opening up already, all right? And now see, look up here. The camera, you got it, camera up here, okay? You can see that it's retracting from the white. I, I don't mind that. So I'm gonna swipe again. There we go, look at that. Nice, nice cells coming up. All right, clear it off. Got some real nice cells coming here, okay? Clear it again. All right, now can you put, there's some more cells, all right? So can you go ahead, I'm just kind of swiping everywhere, but don't take that dirty color and swipe it through. Clean it off between your swipes. I just totally, this is, you could also wear gloves if you wanted to. So now I look over here, I'm getting all over my clothes. So if you guys only see what happens behind the camera. So I've got some great cells opening up right here. Now, do you put oil on top? You can guys, but you know what's gonna happen is the oil, when you start dripping it on top, it stops to work after a while because the oil starts spreading around. Then you're putting oil on top of oil. 
So let these cells be, these guys are opening up and if you leave this here for 10 minutes, it's going to keep on opening up. So I'm gonna take this little palette knife because I feel like I need a little bit right here. I'm gonna take the small one, I'm gonna dip it. You probably can't see it, but that's okay. I'm gonna dip it in my really thin black, all right? And I actually like that little black right here and I'm gonna pull it across, pull it across here, okay? There's some more, they're opening. You got that cameraman? You follow me, camera guy? Okay, so right there, they're starting to open up. Be careful, no one to quit. Okay, this is probably one of the hardest ones to do, but you can see those cells opening up right there. It is very important to understand that the firing schedule, along with the viscosity of the paints, will have everything to do with your fired outcome. It is very important to understand these two factors, guys, so you are not taken by surprise after the piece comes out of the kiln. What is viscosity? The viscosity is the resistance to flow. Viscosity is very important, in our, not only in our glasswork, but now on these paints that we're using on our glasswork. So paints with a high viscosity would mean that they are very thick. Low viscosity would mean they are very thin. The thicker your paints, the more cracking you're going to have. In addition to that, if you go really hot in your firing schedule, you're going to get more of the crackle look. This is okay. Crackle look looks wonderful. It's beautiful. I have yet to see one of these come out, and boy, have I made a ton of these, but I have yet to see one to come out with zero cracking. I've got it pretty down pretty well, as I'll show you some examples later, but expect this on your first seven, eight, or nine tiles. Embrace it. It's a beautiful look, but just expect this. The paint looks very different when it's wet than when it's dry. When it's wet, the colors are very vibrant. After you fire to the schedule that I'm giving you, you will also get that same vibrancy, so that's fantastic. But you will see the paints uh, making these crater designs, making these beautiful uh, geodesic type of designs, and also... Uh, the floral designs that we use with the oil. And if your paint is too thick or your firing schedule is too high, it's going to come out very crackled. So that would be something to understand. And when they do come out of the kiln, do not be disappointed by the crackle. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Make notes. Make notes. Play with, the, play with the consistency of the paints. And I'm telling you, always go thin, never go thick. And you don't want to be running through these paints like crazy. It's, it'll get very expensive. Thin your paints out and take notes on, on what you do. There are three factors to the crackling. Number one, as I said, the viscosity of the paints. The paints should flow freely when you pour them onto your fused glass blank or your sheet glass. In other words, when you do a dirty pour and, and they flow, and if they're flowing very quickly and running down almost the size of the glass, that's probably a very thin and very good viscosity and you won't get much cracking. If you do the pour and the paints are kind of just sitting there in the middle, not flowing very freely, you can bet that it's pretty thick. If you have to manipulate the disc uh, or the sheet of glass or the fused glass blank to kind of spread the paint around, you can bet that it's probably too thick and we need to get some of that off of there. When you start with a full jar of paint, you might want to pour some of that off into one of the restaurant ramekins that I showed in the, in the video that I use quite frequently and mix it with water. Use those first and then as your paint goes down in volume, you can start adding water directly to the jar. Don't pour too much paint. Let the paint really spread out onto the glass. Use less and thinner paint to start, always. Make notes and adjust along the way. Do not fire a bunch of tiles or pieces of fused glass all at once. Fire one in your kiln and take note of what it looks like and make notes. I made a lot of notes and I made this video. We had tiles all over the place. We had notes on the back. Um, videotape yourself if you can. That's a great way to see you know, how what you're doing and the actions that you're doing so you can repeat them or not repeat them. Don't get frustrated. The first few times, you know, they're... You might not get the results that you like, but you know that the colors are going to be there. The vibrancy is going to be there. It's just a matter of getting that consistency down. You guys should use low heat and low schedule. On the schedule, you'll see that I full fused at 1465, but then I also held it for 20 minutes. The higher you go in temperature, the more the cracks will open up. And if you go really high, I've got some pieces. I've started at 1465, which I'll show here. And then I went really high all the way up to 1520 for 15 minutes to see what happened. They really start to kind of bubble up in surface tension. The cracks open up, the surface tension pulls it back, and they really start to have these wide, huge open cracks. And a couple of these pieces, I really like to do that. 
So do what you like, take notes and experiment. There's a lot to be done with this technique. Uh, I hope you guys have a great time with it. And remember guys, if you're having problems, thinner paint, lower heat. That cracking can absolutely be controlled. Here's a few of my pieces here where there is virtually no cracking on the entire piece. Maybe some very slight areas, but it can definitely be controlled. This is thinner paint, lower heat, and the paint was very thin on the piece of glass. All right, this is number three. Okay, so this is getting small cells very small cells with the blow dryer. The blow dryer, A, it has to be on hot, and also B, um, you don't want to have it on high. So it's low and hot, okay, everybody? And you're not, just remember that, low and hot. Now, some of you are probably thinking, can you use a creme brulee torch, okay? And I did do that, and I tried that. Uh, I did get some smaller cells, that was, that was okay. Um, but the oil <laughs> will catch on fire that you use. So you will actually, you know, I mean, you're not gonna like, you know, I got a the creme brulee torch I, I get very scared of. I also put it down, picked it up by the raw end. It's hot and it burns you. So I try to stay away from that. But if you are using oil, I would not use the creme brulee torch. Um, just don't use it. Just use it for, you know, if someone else is doing it and you want to do it, go ahead. But let's keep the torch out of it, okay? All right. So I've got a cool color palette here. And I know a lot of you guys got the cool kit. So what I did was I mixed all my paints with the water two squirts of water, and I did that earlier. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the magic oil, ding, okay? And then I'm going to put two or three drops in each. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And what we're going to do is called a dirty pour. That is, um, I did? Yeah. Thank you. John, the camera guy, back from Africa, tell me what's up. One two, three, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these, okay? I'm going to mix them with the oil, all right? Now, these already have um, water in them because remember, I thinned them out a little bit. And, it, it, you know, I know water, it mixes. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it mixes, okay? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this paint to separate a little bit when we pour it. Um, and here's five colors. I don't do much more than four or five when I do this uh, dirty pour. Um, I want to tell you guys that I haven't seen a paint yet besides enamels um, fire this vibrant with my schedule. I'm very proud of the fact that I have worked these glass line paints to the point of awesomeness, okay? When, it, when they fire very vibrant, if you use my schedule, it's going to happen. It doesn't matter if it's 90 or 96, okay? Um, it's just going to happen, so you'll love it. So I've, I'm working on a... Uh, uh, an eight inch round disc. The biggest problem you guys are going to have is how much do you, how much paint do you use? You don't want to waste it. So one of the things I do is I, uh, when I do this pour is I will pour into this. This is just a, like a restaurant container and you can get these anywhere. Um, and what I do is I pour it on here if it's my first time and then I make a mark with a Sharpie line and I pour it onto the bowl. Then I can see if it's not enough, there's ways to go around that. But if it's not enough, I know I have to do a little bit more and I record that in my notes. It's not all just fun, right? We have to do some technical stuff. So I would say nine inch disc equals half inch uh, of paint, you know, on this, you know, in the container. You, there's ways to figure it out. I don't, have a, I don't have a calculation for you because I don't know the consistency that you guys are mixing these paints, okay? So you, you just got to take notes. You don't want to be wasting stuff. You only need to waste stuff one time. And then you figure it out and you don't waste stuff again if you do. I'd rather have you guys be short and we can go over that. So my dark color right here, um, I definitely feel like I might need some white. But my dark color right here, I'm going to use that sparingly. I am not going to use a bunch of the dark color. It will overpower your whole tile, I mean, very quickly. All right. So now we've got some white here. I need to thin that out a little bit of water. I'm going to do that. Mix it up. I feel like I needed white. Every kit that you guys had came with white and black. Um, we don't have the kits right now, but we've got all of these paints in stock right now. Lots of the Magic GAI oil. Just look at the email that came, and you will see the supply list, okay? All right, so I don't want to forget my oil. One, two, three. Okay. I don't have these all the way full. Now, also, if you guys are going to do pours, I suggest getting a bunch of blank tiles. So this one, I'm going to actually um, let it dry. And I, this is not a prefused tile. This is just a piece of Tecta glass, okay? Bullseye Tecta. 
So now I'm going to mix that. And I mixed the other ones, I believe. All right, now, now I'm going to go ahead and, and do my pour. So I go ahead, this is like everything you've seen on the internet, and I want to layer the colors. Get a good shot of that? Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit of light green. I'm going to do two rounds of the pouring. Now, I like to put colors, I don't like to put colors that are too close to each other next to each other in the pour. So I've got that green to break that up. Okay, and now I've got a blue. That's a dark color. I'm just going to do a little bit, all right? And that white, really like that white. I'll give you. Okay, I'm just tilting my jar. I know it's hard to see, guys. I'm tilting the jar so they're kind of layering on top of each other, okay? So now I'm going to go back to the green. I can't remember the exact order, but I do know I'm looking for contrasting colors, okay? That's a little close, but I'll go with that blue again, okay? You're not using a ton of paint. You're not. Okay, that was a little bit poor. See, I'm getting a nice, I tilted to the side. There you go. And I'm, I know that dark blue is dark, so I'm going to go really strong with the white. I've still got some left, but I'm going to see how that goes. So I'm going to kind of set that up. You can see the pour. Let's see if I can move this out of John's way here. You can see how it's kind of, you know, have ringlets in the pour. So now what you want to do is make that is unacceptable. You want to go ahead and clean your glass. Now I have my piece of clean glass. I take the smooth side. You got that? Smooth side onto the glass, okay? Now, if you have a smaller, like a six by six inch tile, guys, you're going to use this to pour, a smaller. Don't use Dixie cups. They're, it's, it actually um, soaks up the paint a little bit and then when you flip the cup over it, it sticks to the paper in the cup. So I really like the plastic one because it glides right off, plus there's oil in here. So this is a larger tile, so I'm gonna go ahead. You got me see? Okay, flip this over. And give it a minute, give it a minute, okay? Give it a minute to hang out, okay? You can see the close-up camera angle here. You can see that the paint is retracting from the plastic, okay? And that's exactly what you want. It's, it's dripping into each other. That's exactly what you want. Uh, that paint is sliding down. That's a great consistency of paint. If it was too thick, it would stick into the bottom when you flipped it over. And then that's kind of a waste of paint. So this is pretty good. So I'm going to lift this up, all right? I've already got some cells that are happening. What's happening is the paint is separating. There's some really good ones happening over here already. And don't forget the schedule that you guys get with these. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, so, I'm very humble. It's amazing because you're going to get vibrancy out of all this. Now this is too thick. So I'm going to go ahead. All right. And I'm going to go towards camera two here and I'm going to spread this a lot around a little bit. Just pay attention. They're opening up right now. They're already opening up. It's that's from the oil. I, you know, sometimes you don't even need a blow dryer. Don't, you know, don't, uh, what's, what's, the, what's the term? Don't fix it if it's not broke. Wow, these are really good cells already. Real good. Whoa, whoa, a lot of action, a lot of action. Guys, this is a really good one. <laughs> um, I'm gonna hit it with the blow dryer just to show you, but this is so good that you don't even need to. All right, I'm gonna go on John's camera now. John, you see that down here? Is it a glare on there? Okay. So guess what, I forgot to mark my cup. What you wanna do is when you fill this with paint, you want to kind of just, it was actually like way down here. So I would know that this is pretty good um, for the uh, a nine inch disc, okay? So I would say add a little more. And so what I would do is mark this with a Sharpie at the paint that I had. I mean, it was like way down here. It's not a lot of paint, guys. All right, mark it down. In my book, I'd go nine inch disc. Uh, you might even want to save these and put nine inch disc and a Sharpie right on here. Huh? Huh? Okay. Uh, these cells are amazing. I'm not, I'm going to show you the blow dryer, but if you don't have a lot of cells, um, you can actually hit it with the blow dryer and make more cells. This is a ton. This is a ton of cells. This is probably one of the best tiles I've ever done, but let's just show you. If you feel like you don't have a lot, um, you can go ahead and use that blow dryer on low and on high. And then I'm going to do is hit some of these areas and, and you'll get some of them. These are small cells. Okay. All right. So make sure it's hot. Don't use a heat gun, guys. No heat gun. And I just kind of hit these areas right here. And they're going to open up a little bit. There we go. And I can kind of push with the paint a little bit. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, so the idea here is the heat for it to cause a little bit of the oil for it to go psh and spread. Uh, the pour was so good that I didn't really need the blow dryer. So, guys, the goal is to be this and have this consistency and um, get these cells right off the bat. You don't need the blow dryer. So in order to get these all these cells, guys, okay, it's four or five colors of paint. 
You're going to do two rounds. You're going to pour aqua, celadon, light blue, dark blue, white. Okay, putting the dark blue and the white next to each other gives you a really great contrast. Do it again. Aqua, celadon. What did I say? Dark blue, white, okay? So it's, it's a two rounds, and then you're going to dump it. You want two layers, okay? Dump it, pour it, put it in. What is that thing? <laughs> dump it, pour it, put it in a, put it in the oven for Sierra and me. Okay, so anyways, that's it. Uh, John, you get any cells? Now watch, I'm, I'm kind of getting greedy, and I'm, I'm, pour, I'm moving this over a little bit. Man, this is honest to God, like the, one of the best ones I've ever made. So how, and now I'm going to go ahead and take it to the edge. Now let's say I didn't quite get it to the edge. The idea is this will not, you don't want to break up these cells here. You do not want to break this up. If you start pushing stuff around to get to the edges, what is going to happen, guys? You're going to ruin your cells. So then we got to go ahead and come to the sides right here. So let me show you a trick, okay? So now I go, oh, shoot, I don't have, oh, I don't have enough. So I'm going to go in, into my other paints. I'm just going to kind of pour it on the side, the paint that I have left. And do I have any left in those cups? Yeah, I'm just going to do this. I'm not, not too thick. Try to match that consistency. Okay. Maybe a little white. I could even check this out really thin out, thin this out. Okay. Just like you did with that uh, swipe there. And I'm losing track of my stuff. Okay. Pour it right on top. There you go. All right. Pour it right on top right on top. And I'm going to show you something. Okay. So it's, it's never lost guys. All right. Uh, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. Um, so let's say I take the little bit, I take this little guy right here and I go ahead and I thin out some, Oh, I don't know. What color do I want to do here? Let's do uh, dark blue. It seems to be a good contrasting color. Remember the swipe guys. Remember that? Okay. Now the oil is already all up underneath here. So I go ahead and I'm hoping that John can, can you get that John? Just like the swipe thing, I'm going to pour a little bit onto this. Okay. Just a little bit, little, it's real thin. Remember your swipe color is always thin. Just remember those rules. All right. And now I can come back over to the disc. All right. And I can kind of swipe on top. Just swipe it there. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at all that. Look at that. Okay. That's from all that oil. Dress the sides. Don't forget to dress your sides. That's from all the oil that's already on there. So all I did was pour. I cleaned my spatula. Okay. This is how you get away with it if you're too short. Thin out. Your swipe color is always thin. Let it run into that little turkey baster pan and come across the top with it. Okay. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh boy. Oh my. Wow. Okay. So check it out. Right, John? You see that, hon? Oh, you guys know he's my husband, right? I'm just... Okay. You see that? Yeah, someone just rocked it. That's what that means. Okay, so now I go over here. I can do little cells. There's already oil. You need oil to swipe, okay? There's already oil. Don't mix it too much, guys. Don't start mixing and mixing and mixing. John, can you get a big shot, wide shot of that, please? Yeah, sir. I said I need some sales. Uh, give me some sales. I need the sales. All right, guys, now that we got all of our paint mess cleaned up here, uh, I want to point out something. So we did a, quite a few things. The first two tiles were pre-fused, and we went ahead and did our swipe techniques on those. And then we had a single layer disc, which was Tecta glass. I'm showing you the pictures right now. And then I will have to back that up with a piece of glass. I'm going to show you how to do an organic frit rim. It's just another thing for you to do uh, if you want to do. Guys, you don't have to make these huge bowls and these huge plates, okay? A lot of you guys are sellers out there. That's how I started my whole glass career. It's what, that's how this whole darn thing started. I was in shows and galleries, so just like you guys are. The holy grail of selling, you've got to have your bread and butter, okay? Your bread and butter, that, that's thing that, those are things that'll fly out the door. No, it's not the wine bottle cheese tree. It's, I mean, it is, but we don't want to admit it. But one of the thing is you want to have, it's, it's inexpensive to make, does not take a lot of material, does not take a lot of your time, okay guys? And it's unique. Really think about that. that. That's hard to come up with something that's unique, okay? You don't want it to look cheap. This is it. All you gotta do is put a bunch of tiles around and pour a bunch of paint on them and then go ahead and slump those into little dishes as you see here, okay? That could be it. The paints are non-toxic, they're um, lead-free, they're good for food-bearing surfaces, and you don't even have to clear cap them. So 
Um, and one other thing I want to say about when you guys are selling at shows and even in galleries, make sure that a gallery buys enough of your stuff to make an impact, okay? So you don't want to have, the worst thing you could have at an art show, and I do see this all the time and I want to counsel, and then John says, Tommy, please don't say anything because I want to counsel people all the time, is you can't have a booth with 80, 80 different things on the table that make no rhyme or reason. You want to have them sets. You want to have them grouped together. So you have a little section of the booth. It's too much for people to look at. They come up. They're like, oh my gosh, where do I start first? Okay, have your jewelry grouped in one section. Have your paint plates. You don't want one paint plate and then a woven plate sitting right next to it and then a glass cascade and then a powder plate. It's too much. You gotta group them. Make five or six of each technique. Group it on the table. It's organized. It's not chaotic for people to look at. Um, so you know that's that's something else that, that you guys should be doing when you're selling in shows. But anyways, so this right here is just uh, one of my tiles that has dried. This has actually been dry for uh, a month. I have a bunch of these just sitting in a drawer. Sometimes I don't feel like creating anything, so I just pour a bunch of paint and do my thing, and uh, then I let them dry overnight, and then I get back to it a month later. You can see that the paint is very thin, okay? So how do I know this? Because I don't have a lot of cracking on here. I hardly have any. There's some very slight cracks up here. I can see the flowers. You can also see that it's very dull, okay? When this paint dries, it turns to a chalky consistency. When you fire it to the Tanya V at schedule, it's going to be very glossy, okay? So I'm gonna pull this plate in, or it's a mess, but so that's how it looks when it's glossy, all right? I think that's a big blob of paint right there it is, okay? All right? This paint is very dull when it dries. It will gloss up on the firing, okay? So let me just show you a basic thing. You can use these as other components, okay? Here's a perfect example of why you want to put tape on the back of your glass. And don't forget to remove your tape. You cannot fire the tape in the kiln. I'm, I mean, in case anyone tries to call me out on that, you cannot do that, all right? So this has to be cleaned. If you forget to tape, if you don't, it's going to cause problems and it's going to cause mumps and bumps in the top of your piece. I'll try to get a picture of that for you guys, all right? So this has to be clean. The only way to get this paint clean now is to scrape it off. I usually just use a razor blade, but it's still a pain. If you could just pull off the tape after it dries, you have a clean back, right, everybody? Okay, this is a six inch uh, tile. I just like to do it with six inches. You could certainly cut this in half and construct a plate. Here's a couple pictures here of that. Okay, so when you guys cut this, you can't cut on this side, you guys, with your strip cutter, you gotta cut on the back side, clean back side, okay? You can cut this up and uh, make it into little pieces and use them all over the place. You can see the pictures of that, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to, this is an eight inch tile, I've got a six inch square, and I'm going to pinwheel, um, these are seven inches, I'll write this down and put it somewhere in the video. These are seven inch sticks that are one inch wide on an eight inch, um, board. I can see that this is a little bit sandblasted. I just grabbed this from the scrap, so that's not going to do anything. So I go ahead and I take my bullseye gel. Love this stuff. It's the blue stuff, okay? And I'm about to glue it on to this. And I think, wait a minute. This area right here, this is a little lackluster. I need a little something here, okay? Now I've already done the paint pouring, and um, you probably could pour on top of here, just to be honest with you guys. That, we'll make that part two. We'll try that later, but I think I need a little something else. I'm going to go ahead and take a stencil. This is optional, and I'm going to go right over here in the corner. I'm going to take some bullseye red. Okay, I'm obviously, I'm working with powder, so what do we do, guys? We put our mask on. Okay, I take a very little bit in the red sifter. I like this one. It's a fine mesh, okay? And I go right over the top. All right, and I take something to vibrate the handle. I actually prefer something metal, um, but this is all the powder that you want. Look at, look, not go, 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 just chink, chink, chink. It's very little bit. Boom, move on, boom, move on, boom, move on. Okay, you can't get it too thick or it's going to collapse and look messy. That's it, okay? I just need a little something there. So I just want to show you that that was an option. Now pick it up, okay? And there we go. So now I got a little something, something. That'll be some bullseye powder in there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pre-cut glass. Okay, and the first thing that I do is take my one inch. So you want four, this is an eight inch plate. You're gonna use your six inch tie on the middle. You're gonna take some bullseye gel. Okay, and I just kind of start the party by putting this on first, one border on first. Now I've got a guide for the rest, okay? Then after I have one border stick on, I put my glass in the middle. Don't try to fit it in after all the borders, okay? That powder actually looks pretty cool. That's going to be pretty nice, all right? So I'm going to go ahead, and I know I'm out of the shot, and I'm going to glue, and I pinwheel it, OK? 
Okay, watch how many. It's so funny because every time I have a class when we pinwheel something, everybody goes, it takes a long time. I did too to get the pinwheel going. I might even do it right now in front of you. Let's, let's see how bad I can embarrass myself. Oh no, I didn't. Shocker. Okay, got a nice maroon here. Look at it, guys. This is it. Slump this. Be done. Be done. Have a new series, okay? There we go. All right. Tyrone, I know you're watching my Tyrone. I can't wait to see what you do with this, buddy. I know you're going to rock this out, okay? All right. So then that's it. And what do I do? I full fuse it. Now, here's something that's amazing. When you do this, you can full fuse this, okay? And there is the stencil right here. You can full fuse this, and you can also full fuse the pre-fuse tiles with the paint on them at the same temp, okay? Everything can go in one kiln. That's the schedule I'm giving you is whatever technique of doing this video, it all can go in one kiln. Now, that's that. Let me show you one other thing before I show you a mounting thing that I just came up with this morning with the alcohol links, okay? And then I'm done. Okay, this is very thick paint, okay? I let this dry overnight. This is very thick paint. You got a close up of that, John? Okay, now you can let it ride. Let it rock, let it ride. Those cracks are gonna open up a little bit into surface tension. Due to surface tension in the full fuse, they're gonna pull apart, guys. They're going to. That's surface tension. Make sure that your glass underneath is something you want to see. It could be clear, it could be whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of that red powder, okay? And I'm going to show you a finished shot of how, what I did here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can see the red in the middle of the cracks. That's powder, okay? So, yeah, could you use red glass? You could too, but you could use all different kind of powder. So all I'm going to do is just kind of go in the... If you have your mask on, don't forget your mask, guys. We're working with powder. You know this stuff already. I'm going to go into the big crack areas here. All right, just a little bit. I'm gonna take my fan brush, okay? I'm gonna to try to do this. Want, you want your fan brush to be just like this. You want it to be parallel to the top of the tile and you're gonna sweep right across like that, okay? Sweep right across, sweep and sweep and sweep, okay? I'm gonna come over here and sweep and all those ridges are going to catch that powder, all right? So this, will, this is what happens. You cannot do this after you're fired, obviously. This is what happens when you have a very thick paint tile. You can go ahead and add. You get some really cool kind of um, geological cracks in there. So this is doing the paint pour. Okay, don't go like this. I'm digging it out. You want to be like this. I was doing that and I went to, I forgot to say don't do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going across like this. All right, across like this, sliding across the top. If I see some areas that need to be buffed out, I just take my finger, pull them out. So now I've got these crazy red valleys in here with powder. That's kind of cool, guys, all right? That's fun to do. So if they crack, let it crack. Embrace the crack, love the crack, okay? Be one with the crack, let it happen, okay? Now, the reason why this is cracked is why? Because I had such thick paints, okay? Practice, but we make something out of everything. We don't get frustrated, we don't waste material, we make something out of everything, because someone is going to love the crack, okay? All right, let me show you one cool mounting thing, guys, and I am out of here. Alrighty then, last but not least, okay? Came up with this this morning. It wasn't on the supply list, but we've got these awesome new um, brushed metal stands and they're stainless steel. They're not aluminum, guys. They're stainless steel. They're amazing. We have tons of different sizes and I'm literally obsessed with them and they're super easy. They have this bracket on the back. You just get a picture hook hanger thingy. Uh, the directions are on the website under each listing as well, okay? Um, here's a picture of that uh, hook thingy. And all you do is just screw that into the wall. It's really, really easy, guys. Very woman friendly as well. But the brushed steel, you can leave it just like that, or you can dress them up with alcohol inks and have something like this going on. So this is um, a five inch tile that I made using the paint pouring technique. You can see there's, um, it's, it has a lot of cracking. Why would that be? Because the paint is thick. I want you guys to recognize why stuff is happening. Anyways, this is how you mount it. There's a little bit of a gap right here. So all I did was you can just take a piece of, um, I took a piece of six millimeter glass. You could take a piece of six millimeter glass. This is six millimeter Tecta, not everybody has that. And all you do is use the silicone glue. I'll show a picture of it right now. And you just make vertical stripes of glue down the glass about an inch apart. And then you just glue the glass to the stand. And then you glue the glass, the finished glass to the glass and it kind of pops it out a little bit for that 3D effect. Okay, we're gonna go back over here to uh, Sierra's camera. 
All right, so that looks pretty cool. You don't have to have six millimeter glass, guys. You could use a piece of tile. You can use a piece of foam core. Um, I mean, not, that might not be sturdy enough, but a piece of tile, just something to pop it out. Use your imagination. Just something in there to raise it up a little bit. Uh, real easy and use the silicone glue. So what I did was I used alcohol links all around here. Um, you can use a sealer if you want, but these alcohol links sink right into the stainless steel and I didn't even use a sealer. If they're not gonna be outside, I wouldn't even bother with it. And then you can see this kind of spritzing action. I'm gonna lay this down and show you how I did that. And I used some acetone uh, to dress it up or just put it on stainless steel and uh, be done with it, okay? But let me just go ahead and show you how I did these alcohol links real quick. All right, I'm gonna have John get a close up here, guys. Uh, I, I'm, this is like a 50 Opti Zoom camera, so I'm sure you can see this really cool aquatic kind of spritzing um, these water droplets around here. Okay, so what that's done with acetone. I just dip my toothbrush into it after I'm done, but um, I'm going to kind of fly through this because this video is getting, again, very long, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. So what you want to do is before you even glue anything, you obviously want to do the alcohol links, okay? So I'm going to move this aside, and then I'm going to take this back into the shot here, okay? So, by the way, guys, some of these have welding marks and things that are on the back. That's expected with these. Uh, these are handmade. Just be careful of the edges. They do sand them a little bit, but just don't, I haven't cut myself, but just always be careful. So you could actually just go like this. I would definitely pop that out, and that could just be done. That could just be cool. Or we can go crazy and alcohol ink it. But let's just do both, okay? So go ahead and we don't want to glue until this is completely uh, dry. Okay, so you want to go ahead and make sure and clean this. Just clean this with some water. Just a paper towel and go ahead and clean it. There's a little bit of dust. It might be some, oh, I got my head in the shot. Might be some residue there from when they brush them. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and clean that real quick. Okay, and there's some dirt. You can see that. Want to get all that dirt off there? I advise you guys to wear gloves. You can see my hands. They don't look um, awesome right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose my colors. I'm going to cho choose this green palette right here. I have my nice poured tile, pretty, okay? And I'm gonna get a little yellow. Uh, we've got all kinds of alcohol links on the website, guys. So a lot of you guys probably have one of the other videos I did with alcohol links. Can you fire alcohol links in the kiln? No, you cannot, um, but you can use them for other things and that's what we're doing right now. All right, so all you're gonna do is, you know, do it till you like it, guys, okay? You're gonna start playing with the alcohol links. So one of the things I like to do is actually take a paper towel um, as they spread. This is going to seep right in there. It start looking too thin for you. Excuse me, thick in areas you can spread it out. There's just a lot of stuff you can do with this. See how I'm just kind of messing with it? Careful, you know you don't want it to look like mud, so you can see some of that nice stuff coming out. All right, so I've got some nice, um, I don't know what they look like, kind of spots, I don't know. All right, so I can go ahead and just kind of rub this in. I mean, you can literally just rub this in and just color wash it, but I like to be a little more funkier. So this blue is pretty dark. I'm gonna go ahead and, wow, that even looks cool right now. I mean, you can literally just glue it in. So kind of take your glue, what am I talking about? Wiping, I'm getting tired, everybody, okay? So, and you could just be like that. Uh, that's kind of cool, but I'm going to go ahead and put some spritzing and stuff in there. Um, so the thing with alcohol links is they blend with each other and, uh, you know, la, la, la. They're just fun to work with. Just keep playing with it. Just don't get crazy. Like, I'm going to make a couple drops, and you get that spritzing right there. But I like to use the acetone uh, spritzer on this because of the fact that it will bring out some of the silver in the back, and I'll show you that, okay? So I'll put a couple drops. It's a little bit too much blue for me. So I'm going to go ahead and that's what it does. Alcohol mixes with alcohol, mixes with the color underneath and pushes it away and then reveals that color. What else do I need? I really, I kind of, a couple more of this orange. It's kind of a coppery color, maybe less blue. Be careful though, because if you mix it uh, with like orange and blue on the color wheel, those, if you mix those together with paint, it's brown. So it's not going to be, see that? There it is, brown, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. I like some of that orange. That orange is kind of nice. So I kind of take this. I got a nice ringlet going over there. It just kind of... See you guys, these are going to be fun. This is suitcase art, my sweets. This is suitcase art. I'm on vacation. I'm looking around at the art show. I look at the stuff. I go, oh my gosh, it's such a reasonable price. I can put that in my suitcase. Boom, sold, okay? That's what you want to do. All right, so I would work on this a lot longer, but I'm going to spare you the uh, drama of me doing that. So right here I have some acetone in my bucket. Don't put the acetone in the plastic cups that you used to pour earlier, because guess what? It'll eat through the cup. 
I take a toothbrush. No, not your husband's toothbrush if he got you night mad the night before. You don't do that. That's not nice, everybody, okay? You just dip it. I take my toothbrush. I don't even, I just kind of, you gotta take something else. I take my toothbrush. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Boom, boom, okay? What do you think of that? This is optional. This is optional. So what the acetone will do will actually remove the alcohol and bring out some of that silver right there. Do you see that? You got that? All right. I kind of look. I take that. Uh, I need a little bit more over here. So I'm going to take. I don't want to do it over the. You just you know sometimes you want to do it over the whole. Ah, oh, look, it's already dropping. Be careful. So what you want to do is, John, if you can get that acetone up here. Okay, dip your acetone, toothbrush in the acetone. Let the excess drip off. Okay, kind of drip off. And then take it above high and use an instrument to kind of just, just catch the, the spritz. See it, guys? Just catching the spritz. Catching the spritz. Spritzing of love. Okay? So now, the thinner that your alcohol ink is, the base, you're obviously going to bring out more of the silver. If you have colors on top of colors on top of colors, and then you do the spritz, you're going to reveal what's underneath. So like right here, there's a lot of not so much silver, but blues. The spritz are blues. That's because I had so many layers of alcohol ink, guys, okay? So it's basically a remover. That's kind of kind of cool. I think I would just kind of get my glass and, you know, kind of look at it. Position, there we go. That's the stuff right there. Right, John? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you could easily glue this right to the tile, but I really find that by, you know, raising that a little bit, it looks kind of cool. Do a series. John's going to widen that shot for me right now. Guys, I know you're freaking out right now. I would be if I were you, because this is pretty awesome. I'm actually going to put these in the bathroom at the house, okay? So John's getting both of these right now. You could match it. It could be a triptych. Don't ever do two. Don't do two. You can't do two. You won't feel right about two. You got to do three. You do one or three or five, all right? Have them as a series. This can be a whole new thing for you. Whole new thing, okay? Uh, I'm going to show you guys one more thing. We're going to put all those pieces in the kiln, and I'm going to show you how to do an organic frit rim. Um, on that bowl that I did, that, that uh, circle that I did. But until that time, um, I think this is going to be it for my show. I'll do the organic. And guys, we thank you for supporting AA Glass. We thank you for supporting Tanya Viet. And uh, please, please support us by be buying your supplies here. We work hard on these uh, videos for you guys. And uh, we appreciate all your support to keep on pumping through the years. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, I wanted to show you how I got that organic rim. This is really easy on that galactic bowl. I'll give you another flash. It was real hard to get a picture of that guy because it's huge and it has a lot of glare. Um, so basically, all you do is I'm taking Bullseye 1808 Aqua Tint, one of my favorite colors of all time, and I just kind of put it in the lid of the jar, and I'm just coming around the edge. Let it fall on top of the paint, okay? Let it fall on top of the paint. So I'm just getting this nice organic, and it seems to go with this earthly galactic kind of, this looks like a planet. And this is an actual planet right now. I go out about an inch, guys, okay? And I'm gonna go all the way around and get the little loosey-goosey guys out of there. I don't have to cold work it. It's just, an, it's basically me not wanting to cut a rim, a border out of a circle, because it's hard, and some days I don't want to do it. And uh, I, I always like the flow of the edge. Let the little pieces just kind of come up. I like to just push them up a little bit. It'll give you some depth in the paint. So I always, I don't want it to look, I want it to blend in. So I kind of come up a little bit on the edge. Okay, a little bit, a little bit, and just kind of let it blend. And yeah, about an inch and a half all the way around. Scoop it in. And I'm gonna do that all the way around and we're gonna go ahead and give this a fire.